Today, I'm making a carrot blossom boche, which is a caramelized honey mead. Let's get started. So this honey came pre boshade which most honey normally doesn't, which is just odd. I don't know exactly how long they boshade it for. I do know that this is the color of it. This is carrot blossom honey, which has an earthy and warm spice floral note to it. This mead was made because I ran into an issue with another mead and needed to make a dry traditional to blend it with. So I used the recipe on screen and decided to split the batch out of the primary. Half of this mead went towards blending with an overly sweet traditional and the other continued on its own path. I chose the Kvike Lutra because it's a pretty clean and fast fermenter. It required a lot more nutrients than most normal yeast, but that's just something you deal with when using Kvike strains. I started by getting my ingredients and mixing them up. My starting gravity was 1.110. I had to add about 12 uh, grams of Fermate O and six grams of DAP to this brew. I added the Fermate O before the fermentation started and then the DAP at the 48 hour mark to make sure the yeast weren't hurt by it. I also fermented this with my heat wrap in an attempt to appease the Kvaik gods. I used a tilt hydrometer that tracked the progress of this mead the whole time, so here's that big table. After it came out of the primary, I racked into a new container. The primary was about 20 days. I wanted to move it to a new container to hopefully help more sediment drop. The new gravity was 1.000, which is odd because sometimes Beauchade honey leaves some residual sugar. I also stabilized the brew with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. I did this so there would be no more re-fermentation with the blended brew or this brew moving forward in general. After taking about two gallons of the brew and blending it with the overly sweet one, I was left with about two gallons to play with. I decided to add about one pound of eucalyptus blossom honey and one half ounce of mocha oak chips. The new gravity with the sprue was 1.020. I left the chips on for about two weeks and then racked off of them into a bottling bucket and bottled. This brew has been a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy the tasting. All right, here we are for the final tasting. Isn't it fun? Um, you watched about two to three minutes of video that was summing up about five months of um, what I've been doing with this brew. So you just watched all of that. It's five months old. Is this pretty early to do a tasting? 14.3-ish percent? Yeah, I mean, realistically, I don't know. There's, there's some heat that's probably gonna be there, but I wanna go ahead and taste this. Uh, I probably will return, do a taste test in the future. So yeah, what's this bad boy look like? Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, it is clear, it is dark, it is nice looking. My glass that I poured in is not exactly nice looking. Uh oh, Ooh, that is a deep nose. Yeah, I'm not even gonna fake y'all out. There's a little heat on the nose. I don't, I wanna be as true as possible. Um, some heat on the nose, but there's a deep spice, complexity, oak, sweetness on the nose. Ooh, this is a vanilla from the oak. I mean, Let's just try it. Here we go. Ooh. Yeah, carrot blossom honey has such a fun spice, or earthy, spicy note that's in there like naturally, and it could just be the Flying Bee Ranch um, version that I get that has that. I don't know, let me know if you've had this before, but is there's like a, there is a nice spiciness in here. The That heat I was talking about, it's a little bit there to be honest, but it is not disorientingly strong. Like I'm not tasting this going like, oh, I can't drink it, you know? And it's not burning my throat which is pretty impressive for 14.3% at five months. I mean, it's apparent, but it's not destroying me. Oh yeah, there's a richness there, that oak. The Boshang side has provided some um, caramel note to it. Honestly, like it's pretty dang good. I, and I know, I'm 100% certain that this thing is gonna be even more bomb with given, given more time because time is just a way to meld all of these flavors um, 
to really round out kind of I don't want to say get rid of alcohol heat but it definitely tempers it down so if you've ever made a brew and you're like man this thing feels like I'm getting punched in the face by a uh, you know or you know by whiskey <laughs> like when you drink whiskey you're going to feel that burn this is like a super good dinner end of dinner drink because it's got like a to me oh that's what it has it has like a that caramelizing side it's dipping into like a a bourbon a bourbon bourbon yeah. bourbon like brown sugar side that's super interesting it's got this dessert style drink vibe going with it and that carrot blossom honey is just super cool i mean listen y'all i can't make this up this thing is super good here's the real problem it's nothing that uh it's really a problem because this honey there's two i guess major problems one carrot blossom honey is kind of hard to come by i got it from flying bee ranch they sell it regularly with so you can go buy some they just so happen to also be selling this Beauchade carrot blossom honey. Now, I don't know if that was like a surplus, like what happened, why they were selling it, but I bought it and there's like a probably a 5% chance that I make the exact same Beauchade character if I were to buy their honey again. So it's really hard to repeat a mead like this. I'm just going to be blatantly honest with you. I, this recipe is like fun. And I want you to try it, but I'm telling you, you're probably not going to make this exact same thing that I have right here. Kind of is true of all meads in general. You know, when you go, when I give you a recipe, even if it's Walmart ingredients, where theoretically Walmart has a pretty unified selection of things, you're still going to have a really hard time creating the same brew that I tell you, that, that I've made using that those ingredients. And that's just because... There's a wonderful thing in the wine world that spills over to the mead world called terroir. So if you're unaware of what this is, terroir is normally associated with grapes. So, you know, grapes that are grown in certain regions of France are going to be different than the grapes that are grown in the wine country areas in California. Terroir. And terroir also plays into the season in the year. And, you know, the terroir of a specific grape in 2021 might be completely different than 2022. So, this mead, with the terroir of the honey and the bochang, there's lots of variables here that, that make it harder to do. This is not to discourage you from trying it, from going and buying honey from Flying Bee Ranch. I encourage you to do that. But you should go and experiment with some new kinds of honey maybe carrot blossom maybe you go and get it you've never used orange blossom okay go get some orange blossom honey get online and get it if you can't get it locally but try that support your local people that's important also support the people online because they need help too and i feel like it's controversial for me to say this but expand your honey knowledge to other kinds of honey for me if i only bought local honey I'd be living with clover and wildflower. And I'll tell you what, my knowledge of mead making would be about a tenth of what it is if I only ever used those two. So, grow your mead making knowledge. I hope you will uh, hit subscribe, support the channel. There's a bunch of, bunch of stuff you can go and support the channel via patreon or youtube membership all that stuff goes to support me but i hope you will um hopefully subscribe to see more videos because i enjoy doing this this will probably appear in the future sometime from now maybe at a year and a half or so just to see an update so who knows i appreciate you hope you enjoy the video i'll see you in the future cheers